Hey, how's it going? I'm Joe. This is Leah. We're Let's Head Wherever. And in this video, I'm going to outline how and why we recently upgraded our RV's battery. So RVing is more popular than ever, and it's becoming increasingly difficult for us to find full hookup spots while we're on the road. If we want to keep traveling and being able to stay wherever we want, we really needed to do something different with our batteries. Uh, on top of that, we left probably the noisiest and tightest campground we've ever been in. And we both really prefer to stay somewhere like this. Yes, this this is more my speed. I don't like the tight spots and walking out the front door to a sewer pipe. <laughs> uh, I'm all about hanging out in the woods, off grid. But the sad thing is, is after a day with us, even using power conservatively, yeah. It was crossing fingers the next morning to make sure we had enough juice in our, la our lead acid batteries to bring the slides in and use the leveling system to hook back up to the truck so we can get back out of town. So this won't be a detailed how-to, just a little bit about how we upgraded from our two lead acid batteries to a single 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from Enduro Power. So while we're talking about taking out these lead acid batteries, let's talk about a few of the things that led us down the lithium route. So each of these batteries is rated around 80 amp hours. So we have two batteries, 80 amp hours each. That's 160 amp hours, right? Not exactly. The thing that I didn't know about these is that you're not supposed to discharge them under 50% capacity. So what that actually means is 40 amp hours here, 40 amp hours here for a total of 80 amp hours. So you're really only getting half capacity from each of these. And when we're talking about all of the things that are connected to your RV's 12 volt system, 80 amp hours is really not a whole lot of energy. Something else, you see the labels, danger, poison. These things have to be vented. There's hoses that go out. You'll usually see a vent on the side of your RV uh, to get out the gases that these things put off. And also you have to keep distilled water with you and you gotta keep popping these things off and making sure they have a sufficient amount of water inside of them. That's just one or two more things added to the list of things you already have to maintain in the RV, I was happy to get rid of it. Something else to consider and a thing that I didn't have a very good appreciation for until I was lifting them from the front storage is that these things are heavy. At 60 pounds a piece together, we got 120 pounds of battery in that front storage area, putting that all on our pinway. To get 200 amp hours of these lead acid batteries, we would need five of them. So at 60 pounds a piece, we're talking 300 pounds on the pin, taking away from your truck's payload just to get the amount of capacity from that 143 pound lithium battery. So what made us choose to upgrade to a lithium battery? There's a few reasons. Uh, the first one is we just talked about the lead acid batteries, 50% discharge rate. With a lithium battery that's gone, we have a 200 amp hour battery. We can use all 200 amp hours of that battery. Run it to zero charge it back up, no big deal. It's not gonna do any damage to the battery. Another nice thing is that the Enduro Power battery only loses 3% of its charge each month that it's not being used. It's not as big of a deal to us as full-timers, but if you're a weekender and you've got it in storage, that can make a big difference. Uh, for us, we've dropped it off to service a couple times, and even though we used the battery disconnect, by the time we picked it up, it was completely dead and it was a big pain. Yeah, and a major thing for me is the lifespan of these batteries. So the Enduro Power battery that we have, 10 years, uh, it goes 3,000 to 5,000 charge cycles. And even then, you still have 75 to 80% of that battery's original capacity. I think lead acid, we're talking like two, maybe three years if you're lucky. So 10-year life, I'm all about that. It'll last forever. Yes. All right, so there's several reasons why we chose Enduro Power batteries over some of the China Direct brands or the big brand battery that's out there. And one of the big ones for us was space savings. So the Enduro Power batteries are made with a 25% smaller case than other lithium batteries on the market. Right now, we just have the single 200 amp hour. In the future, if we decide to expand our battery bank to two or maybe three batteries, when we're talking about a 25% smaller footprint, that adds up when we're talking about multiple batteries. So our space is limited up here. This is what we have. That 25% smaller footprint is massive for us. 
So we've mentioned a few times, we have a 200 amp hour battery. And one of the cool things about Enduro Power batteries is they have multiple capacities. They have 50 amp hour, 100 amp hour, 200, and even a 300 amp hour lithium battery. And that's significant because if space is a concern like it is with us, and you say you need 300 amp hours, instead of buying three individual 100 amp hour batteries, you can just buy one 300 amp hour battery. Then you're dealing with this battery here, not all this battery here. And when we talk about the cost savings of doing that, um, buying one battery, 200 amp hour, 300 amp hour, over multiple 100 amp hour batteries, we're talking savings literally hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Okay, so let's talk specs. On our Enduro Power battery, if you look at the specifications of that and compare it to the big brand battery, you're gonna see that the specs same or better and we're saving hundreds of dollars. If you wanna compare the Enduro Power battery against one of the cheaper options, uh, China Direct brand, some of the wholesale club bundles, uh, look close because and especially with the charge cycles, you're going to find that you have way more charge cycles on an Enduro Power battery, and the money savings just really doesn't add up for that. And we also like that Enduro Power Batteries is owned and operated here in the U.S., and the co-owner is an RVer himself. So for our project, we actually did three different things. The lithium battery itself, we installed a Victron Smart Shunt, which I'll talk about that in a second. And the third thing that you're not gonna be able to see because it's behind the basement wall is we replaced our converter. The reason that we upgraded our converter is because ours did not have the lithium charge profile on there. Before you mess with yours, check because a lot of the newer models have both the lead acid charging and the lithium charge profile on there. So you may be able to get away without doing that. So the Victron Smart Shunt that we put in here, that's essentially a battery monitor. Uh, they have a cool app where I can go and pull up the current state of the battery. It'll show me the current charge, how much amperage we're using, uh, basically a snapshot of what's going on with the battery. And the reason we went with Victron, there are certainly cheaper options out there. Um, down the road, if we put an inverter in, uh, chances are we're going to end up going with Victron anyways because they put together some great devices for this type of deal. And all the Victron devices, they interface and talk well with each other. So that was just a kind of thinking ahead step to put the Victron Smart Shunt in there. I actually recorded the entire process, me pulling out all the old batteries and putting all the new components in there. Uh, I'll go over some of the highlights right now and show those to you. I had a buddy of mine help out with the wiring portion of this. He has way more electrical knowledge than I do. What he's doing here is pulling the ground wire out of the back of our circuit breaker. And this ground wire goes to the converter, which is basically behind the wall in our basement storage. And this is the new converter that we're going to be putting in to replace ours. And it does have that lithium switch on the back to get that 14.6 volt charge. And here we're removing the screws to pull out that old converter. So this is the new converter. We're just putting that ground wire back through here. And we plug the converter back in behind our circuit breaker, feed in the ground wire, get that reconnected, and it was all ready to go. Here's a speed run. I'm going in disconnecting our existing lead acid batteries. Going to pull those out, remove the box, and then we're in good shape to go ahead and put the new battery, the shunt, and the corresponding wires in. This show in here is some of the area that we saved uh, getting rid of the two batteries just for the single 200 amp hour. And as I'm putting this in here, you can see it's a little bit longer than a single lead acid. It's about one and a half size, the lead acid. But again, it's only 43 pounds, so getting that in there was a heck of a lot easier than trying to get those 60 pounders out of there. 
And over the next couple minutes, you're going to see me installing the smart shunt. I'm just going to screw it into the wall, get those wires hooked up, and then eventually you're going to see me connecting that all back over to the battery. And you'll see that thin red wire that I'm actually screwing in there too. That's going to go into one of the terminals on the smart shunt. That's how it actually gets power. And this process was super fast, pulling the battery up until I had everything tightened down here, cleaned up some of the wires. We're talking like maybe seven to 10 minutes. I went and put the battery connect back in, flipped on the 50 amp and everything powered up perfectly. Okay, so here's the verdict from our first night off grid since we put in our lithium battery. So when we disconnected, we ran our leveling system, we opened all the slides, we opened the awning, and then for the next like 12 hours or so, we ran fans like we normally would. The fridge runs on propane, but it's electric ignition. Um, our hot water heater runs on propane, but it's electric ignition and kept the fans going overnight just to get some breeze in there. The next morning, shut the slides, used the leveling system again to hook back up to the truck. We then came to the campground we are at now and without hooking back up, I left it on the battery just to see like a true depletion of the battery. We used the leveling system again, slides all out again. And then we got everything kind of turned on on the inside and total battery discharge was 41 amp hours. So a full 24 hours off grid, we only used 41 amp hours. And I mean, that's, that's huge. We still have tons of battery life. Um, I wouldn't go as far as saying we can go several days off grid, but for one to two days off grid, I think we have more than enough power for that. So we are super happy with this upgrade. If you are looking to upgrade your RV's battery to lithium, I highly recommend Enduro Power Batteries. You can find them at endurobattery.com. We also have a 5% discount code, might save you a few bucks on any purchases from them. I'll put that information in the title and down in the description as well. I'll also put uh, links for everything that we installed during this project so you have those to look at. Thanks so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed, please give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions, put those down in the comments. And if you wanna continue following along with our full-time RV living adventures, hit that subscribe button. We appreciate you stopping by. We'll see you next time.